Hi, boys and girls. How's everybody doing? Look what I have again. Adventures of Harold and his friends. These are stories about Harold and the Purple Crayon. We've read the first two. Today we'll read the second two. This one is called Harold and the Purple Crayon, the birthday present. And the next one, Harold and the Purple Crayon, Harold finds a friend. I think you're gonna like them both. First, let me say hi to everyone out there. Let's see, who do I see? Sam and Henry, hello. Samantha and Danny, it's hot down there, isn't it? Zayra and Oliver, you were painting this morning. Was that fun? And now you're watching Frozen. How does Mimi know all this stuff? Hi, Iris. Hey, Hannah and Noah. I was just with your grandma and grandpa out in their yard looking at the water. That was so nice. And, and Noah, I saw a beautiful picture that you drew. Oh, I love your artwork. I know grandma's going to frame some of it. Hi, Kayla and little ones. Hey, hey Mata Matea and Madeline. Hi, Zachary, Aria, and Colin. And hi, Ron, the reading teacher, my famous friend, wonderful reading teacher down in Delaware. How's it going? We're going to have a fun story today. Where did, oh no, where did I put my purple crayon? Yay, here it is. Do you have your purple crayon? Remember, only draw on paper, okay? I don't want you to get in trouble with your family. Let's get started. The birthday present. Can you predict what this story will be about? Go ahead, I'll wait. Turn to someone next to you and make your prediction. Okay, right. Yeah, we know it's going to be about a present. Let's find out some more interesting details. Harold couldn't sleep. And, and here's his bed. And he was having trouble sleeping. His mother's birthday was the next day. Harold didn't know what to give her. Any ideas, boys and girls? What's a good gift to give your mom? Okay, I heard some good ideas. He wanted to find the perfect birthday present. Harold didn't think he could find it in his bedroom. So he picked up his purple crayon and set off for an adventure. Okay, let's go on an adventure with him, shall we? Harold decided to go for a walk. He drew the lines where he was going. He drew a path and started on his way. Harold drew a tree. It was such a nice tree that he drew one more and one more and one more. So he kept drawing trees. Mimi loves trees, do you? Soon there was a forest. Harold walked under the trees. They were so tall, they stretched up to the sky. Harold didn't know which way to go. Harold climbed to the top of a tree and looked in every direction. But he couldn't find his way out. Oh no, what's he gonna do? Any ideas, just call it out. Did you see that bird on the next page? Yeah, that gave you an idea. Harold knew what to do. He drew a bird and flew to the edge of the forest on the bird's back. Well, that was a great idea. Harold came to a stream. On the other side, he saw a big field of flowers. What do you think he's going to do? Go ahead, whisper to someone next to you. I'll wait. Okay, someone said pick them. Someone said give them to his mom. Somebody said, no, you can't pick them because they're not yours. Okay, all good answers. Harold drew a bridge 
and crossed over to the other side. So with his crayon, he drew the bridge. That's how he got over there. Now the sun was high. It was very hot and the flowers were sleepy and droopy. The flowers needed water. Harold reached as high as he could and drew a big rain cloud in the sky. Why did he do that? Why did he do that, Zay? Oliver, what do you think? Right, because the flowers needed water. The cloud blocked out the sun. Drip, drip, drip. Rain came down from the cloud. Harold drew an even bigger cloud. Drip, drop, drip, drop. The rain poured down on Harold's head. Do you like to be out in the rain? What do you do when it's raining? Let's see if that's what Harold did. Harold drew an umbrella as quickly as he could. The flowers weren't thirsty anymore but they still looked droopy. Flowers need water and... Sam, Henry, what else do flowers need? Right, did you say sun? Mm-hmm, I heard you. Harold drew a gust of wind to blow the clouds away. The sun sent bright rays of sunshine down to the flowers. One by one, they lifted their heads to the warm light. And you can observe that if you see flowers earlier in the day and then later in the day, you can see that they change their position. Harold looked at the pretty flowers. His mother loved flowers. Flowers would be the perfect birthday present. What do you think? Mimi loves flowers. That would be a great present for me. Now Harold had another problem. He couldn't take the whole field home with him. Uh-oh, what should he do? Ideas? Go ahead, just call him on out. Okay, yeah, he could just take some of them. Harold had an idea. He thought of the perfect gift, but it was at home. How could he get back? Then Harold remembered that he could always see the moon from his bedroom window. What do you think he's going to do? Okay, let's see if you're right. Harold drew the bedroom window around the moon. Back in his bedroom, Harold realized that the perfect gift for his mother had been right at his fingertips the whole time. What's Harold doing? Can you see? Right. Right, he's drawing something. Harold would give his mother a flower. He knew she would love it. She could keep this flower forever. And it wouldn't need water or sunlight. Why? Why wouldn't it need water or sunlight? Oliver, why not? Right, because it was a picture. When Harold finished the flower, he left the picture where his mother would see it. Then he climbed into bed. So he's getting into his bed and he's going to go to sleep. Then Harold dropped off to sleep. And Harold's purple crayon dropped to the floor. The end. Did you like that story? Was that a good idea? What did you like about his gift? Mm-hmm. 
I like it when the kids make me something themselves. That's always my favorite gift. Maybe you can do that. Can, it doesn't have to be mom or dad's birthday. You can just make them a, a picture. They would love that. Maybe you can draw a picture of some flowers. Let's read the last story in this book. Harold and Lilac, Lilac have fun together. And this is the last story in the book called Adventures of Harold and His Friends. Harold and the Purple Crayon. Harold, I'm sorry, here's the title of the next story. Harold Finds a Friend. I wonder who his friend's going to be. Harold couldn't sleep. So here he is up in his bed again, and he couldn't sleep. He wanted to play, but he had no one to play with. Has that ever happened to you? What do you do when you want to play and you have no one to play with? He decided to play with his st stuffed dog, Lilac. And Mimi brought her stuffed dog over. He threw a rubber ball across the room. Lilac didn't chase the ball. Lilac didn't bring the ball back. She couldn't. Lilac was just a stuffed animal. Harold wanted a real dog who picked up his purple, so he picked up his purple crayon and set off on an adventure. What do you think he's gonna do this time? Let's follow his purple crayon. Harold drew a path and started on his way. Oh, there he goes. He drew a rubber ball. It was perfect for playing catch. Harold threw the ball and it bounced away. What's he gonna do now? Lilac caught the ball. He brought it to Harold. She brought it to Harold. Harold tossed the ball again. Once more, Lilac chased after it. At last, Harold had a dog who liked to play catch. Oh, that's fun. And there's the ball. And there's the purple crayon in his back pocket. I wonder what they're going to do now. Let's find out. Lilac was good at tricks, too. A dog who does tricks deserves a reward. So Harold drew a big box of dog biscuits. Oh, that was a good idea. After each trick, Harold gave Lilac a biscuit. Good dog, he said. Is that what you do with your dog? Do you give him a treat when he does something good? Sure. But Lilac was impatient. Uh-oh. She jumped onto Harold's lap. She grabbed the box of biscuits and started digging a hole. Oh, what a mess. Lilac was trying to bury the box. She kicked dirt into the air and covered Harold from head to toe. How do you think Harold's feeling? Right, would you like being covered with dirt? What's he gonna do? Harold told Lilac to stop. She looked sad. Her feelings were hurt. Lilac ran away. Oh no. Harold was alone again. I'll put a chair here just like he has a chair. Harold decided to wait for Lilac to come back. He was tired, so he drew a chair. Harold waited for a long time. He grew bored. Then he had an idea. He'd draw a new friend. Who's he gonna draw? 
Let's see. Harold drew a large round bowl. Then he drew a plump goldfish. But the fish didn't want to play. It just swam in circles. I wonder what Harold will do now. This is a dilemma. Can you make your prediction? Go ahead, I'll wait. Okay, let's see. So Harold drew a big dog. The dog sat down, rolled over, and fell asleep. A sleeping dog isn't any fun, thought Harold. Harold drew a very peppy dog. Harold drew a ball and threw it, but instead of bringing it back, the dog played with the ball all by itself. Is that fun? Whoops. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're back. Mimi dropped Mimi dropped the um the iPad. Okay, sorry about that. Let's go back and figure out what happened after the dog played all by itself. This dog was no fun. Lilac was a good friend even when she misbehaved. Harold had to find her, so he drew a lighthouse. And look what Mimi brought over. Yeah, here's a lighthouse. Mimi collects these, so I have a lot of them in the house. He climbed the stairs to the highest point. He followed the path of the light and looked in every direction. Finally, he spotted Lilac. Harold rushed to Lilac. Harold patted her happily. Lilac wagged her tail. She was happy too. Aww. Harold drew another ball. He threw it for Lilac again and again until they were tired. I wonder what they're gonna do now. Harold and Lilac rested. Then it was time to go home. Harold reached up and drew his bedroom window around the moon. See, he always knew he could see the bedroom, out the bedroom window, he could see the moon. Harold was back in his bedroom. Harold slipped into bed. He was happy to be home with his good friend, Lilac. As he curled up with Lilac, Harold's purple crayon dropped to the floor and he dropped off to sleep. The end. That was a nice story, wasn't it? So now we had two stories and before we had two other stories, all four stories are in this nice little book, an I can read book about Harold and his purple crayon. So what can you do with your purple crayon? Can you draw a path for you to follow? Get a big piece of paper and draw on it. Can you draw the moon? Uh, or if the moon is already, well yeah, draw the moon and then draw the window around it, right? And draw yourself in the bedroom. Can you draw, uh, draw a gift for mom, some flowers? That would be wonderful. Well, whatever you do with your purple crayon, have fun. Remember, it's for drawing on paper, not on walls, not on floors. Okay, love reading to you. Love from Mimi. Bye.